So it all started in 1996 in Heidelberg for us. And we had to decide what would we do with the money the Max Planck had given us. And we came up with this concept of uh, you know, using biophysics to help explain problems in biology. From the very beginning, we were thinking in terms of uh, kind of a multidisciplinary approach to uh, you know, a very difficult problem of how you build tissues. So it was extremely important uh, to get, uh, this was the whole idea that uh, biology was now changing. We had to be much more, we have to go deeper. And for that, we need a total new ways of thinking and also new methodology. The great bit of luck we had is when we moved to Dresden, the Max Planck had built a second institute on theoretical physics, the physics of complex systems. And we started to work with Frank Ulicke on uh, trying to understand how theoretical physics could contribute to understanding biological problems. When I arrived here, I was already very interested to build an interaction collaboration with the Max Planck Institute for, the, for Molecular Cell Biology and Genetics um, in order to carry out research in, in biological physics and, and towards theoretical biology here, here in Dresden. Um, in particular, uh, Joe Howard, who was a director there when I arrived, was also interested in, in, in this link. And uh, this already showed very early that there was a lot of potential to build together a new research program. I, I, I think it's 100% clear that biology is physics and chemistry, both plus uh, all the descriptions uh, uh, that we were masters at uh, morphology and describing um, all the life on this planet. All that together forms biology. And, and if we just focus on one, it's, a, it is a, uh, it's not the full story. You know, how you, how you build multidisciplinary environments, of course, one of the key questions Many places put a physicist in the biology department or a biologist in the physics department. I think we found a different way to do it, which is we left the physicists with the physicists and the biologists with the biologists and drove all the collaboration through joint students and joint postdocs. In this way, the physicists, for instance, stay in touch with cutting edge physics, as do the biologists with cutting edge biology. In, in general, such an um, cross-disciplinary approach bringing physics and biology together will stimulate both sciences. So biology can be stimulated by um, new ways to approach the problems, new questions asked, uh, different methods used. And also physics is um, stimulated because there are new phenomena being discussed. So one tries to apply the known concepts to new phenomena and then uh, this leads to, to innovation in the approaches new concepts that are relevant physically. Um, but biology is a different scientific community than physics, so the way to think, the way to approach problems is different. The challenges are clear. We are all trained in different disciplines and we don't speak the same language. So how do we learn to speak the same language? It's really a matter of getting across what are the interesting questions. You know, sometimes I go to physics and biology meetings and I realized that the physicists, although they're doing wonderful work, are not working on problems the biologists are interested in. So the crucial thing is for the physicists to explain to the biologists what the key physics problems are, and then the biologists to explain to the physicists what the key biology problems are. And once everyone understands what the key problems are, they can work together to try and solve them. The benefit of um, theory in biology is to, is for being able to formulate hypotheses and to formulate predictions based on those hypotheses. And, you know, that's something that, that you know, many biologists aren't, you know, they're not really thinking in those ways. You know, and I think that the, you know, the condensate's a very good example of that. I think if you look at a field like condensates, it requires physicists, but physical chemists and biologists. That's why we adopted the term condensate, because it's an umbrella term that encompasses all these different fields. Just to give one example is that you might have some people working on pea granules and some people working on stress granules. But the term condensate suggests we could also get together to see what's similar between stress granules and pea granules. That is the interesting question, is the similarities, not the differences. And the whole idea of, of the, the, the paradigm shift that we see now, we try to, to combine, to see can we really understand more 
if we get the right structures that support the, the, the cooperation between physicists, uh, engineers, uh, 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 biologists, uh, mathematicians, informaticians, all belong together.